Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure update. It's the 25th of July. Not many updates this week, so we should be able to get through it pretty quickly. I've been in New York the entire last week, so I only got to do one new video. But it's a pretty important one. Uh, many organizations are trying to work out, okay, we know we need to do this generative AI thing and get AI in our applications, but how do you pick the right first workload? Because as an organization, I want to build confidence. And so I go through considerations for how to evaluate the opportunities that you have in your organization and how to pick that first safest one, because there's a number of different aspects to what is a safe and something you want to succeed in initially. So under what's new, Azure CNI uh, static block allocation has gone GA. So when I have Azure Kubernetes service, there are a number of different network options that I can leverage for the pods. Well, what Azure CNI does is it's a flat network where the pods get IP addresses that can be communicated to directly just from anything that has IP routing to the virtual network. The challenge with this is there was a 60,000 pod limit as I was restricted to a slash 16 CIDR range. So what static block allocation does is I can now have the same VNet routable IP addresses, but I can scale to over 1 million pods. Because what's gonna happen is instead of the nodes that make up the node pools getting individual IPs allocated as the pods spring up, every node receives a pre-allocated block of IPs, a side range for the node. And then the pods on that node will consume from the side range. And basically what that means is I get this massive scale capability. So, hey, if I do like the idea of the Azure CNI, and ordinarily these days we don't like that, we prefer the overlay capabilities where I get a different IP range to use for the pods from the underlying network. But if you do like this capability, scale is no longer a limiting factor. On the networking side, so Azure Firewall has now gone GA with ingestion time transformations for its logging. So whenever we think about logging, one of the biggest considerations is, okay, there's probably this huge amount of data available that I can send to the logs. Verbose logs, detail that I can use for insight to go and do hunting if there were problems. Well, there's a cost associated with that. There's a cost for the ingestion of the logs, and then there's a cost for the storage of the logs based on the retention I want. And so while I may want to have data available, one of the things I potentially don't want is to pay a vast amount of money. So what the ingestion time transformation does is exactly as the name suggests, as the logs are being ingested into the log analytics workspace, I can do a transformation on the logs, which would let me reduce the volume of data and therefore the cost of ingestion and the cost of storage. So I can filter, I can modify, I can keep only the data I care about. If you think very traditional data pipelines, we would extract, transform, and then load the data into something, which has given me that similar ability to transform before I'm loading it into my log analytics workspace. I'm gonna create transformations. So I'm using the log analytics capability to define a KQL statement, the Custo query language, and then every time it's trying to do a write, into Log Analytics Workspace, it can run that KQL statement, which will then have the ability to modify or filter out the data. So then I only pay for the ingestion and the storage of what it's doing. Another huge thing this week, Web Application Firewall is finally available for App Gateway for containers. Now this is in preview and it's probably the most requested feature. Now remember, although it says App Gateway in the title for containers, it was basically rewritten from the ground up. Yes, it has a app gateway in the name, but it was built specifically for Kubernetes workloads. It uses the Kubernetes gateway APIs, which then does the mapping to Azure control plane for data plane updates. But as the customer, I don't care anything about app gateway. I just talk the regular Kubernetes and gateway APIs. I don't care about the Azure things. Well, now I can get that regional web application firewall capability in front of the app gateway for containers. So if I think protection from SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and a, a ton of other things. Uh, there's a default rule set, but I can do additional things like um, rate 
throttling, rate limiting, there's bot manager rule sets and a bunch of other stuff as well. So this, again, it was really the most requested feature because you wanna get that protection in front of your regional workload. On the storage side, so Azure Managed Lustre, should be Lustre, not Lester, whoever Lester is, uh, now has VNet encryption support. So Azure Managed Lustre, remember, is commonly used with high-performance computing because one of the things Lustre does, or Lester, is it supports massive parallel access and massive throughput. So if you think about a high-performance computing scenario where I have lots and lots of compute instances and they all want to deal with the data, well, many of them may be accessing the same data at the same time. So I need a huge parallel capability, which is what Lester provides. Well, VNet encryption is a new capability that ensures the data is encrypted in transit between the virtual machines on the virtual network. Well, now the managed Lustre also supports that. So I will get that confidentiality between the communications from the high-performance computing compute nodes, the VMs, and your storage. So it's really gonna be useful for my data confidentiality requirements and regulations I have to meet. Log Analytics has some enhancements to search jobs in GA. Remember, Azure Managed Logs has different uh, tiers of how I store the data. And one of the things I commonly have to do, especially if it's in that long-term retention or the archive store, is I can't just access the data. I have to do a restore job or a search job. So what the search job is, it will go and find the data and then the results of which are pulled into the regular analytics tier, a regular analytics table. So now I can do my full range of KQL against it. Now I pay for those search jobs. And so one of the great enhancements here is before it runs, it will give you a cost estimation. So I can work out, okay, well, what is this gonna cost me? It's got a better user interface. I can run more of those jobs in parallel and the number of results it can return and store has been increased and also additional uh, KQL support. So a lot of really nice capabilities when you're using those search jobs. And summary rules have gone GA for log analytics. So summary rules are really useful if I have a really high ingestion stream. And this actually works for analytics, basic, auxiliary plans. Um, it's all designed around at some cadence you set, it's going to run a summarization query defined in, in KQL. So imagine I just have a mass, a huge amount of data. Well, what this will let me do is maybe that massive sum of data I go and store in a, a cheaper tier of storage. But what that summarization will now do is maybe every minute, every five minutes, ten, whatever I choose, it will run a query to summarize that aggregated view of the data, and I can then go and store that in an analytics table. So I'm not storing a lot of data in the analytics, but now I can go and run queries against the summarized data to get a, a quick view of what is going on. Uh, I might also store the data in the summarized table for longer, and again, save money. And I can have up to 100 of these summarization rules. And finally, but it's a big one, the theme of this week has really been around, well, how can I optimize the storing of data to optimize cost? Well, now Microsoft Sentinel has a data lake support in preview. So traditionally, remember Microsoft Sentinel gets signals from all of your different systems because I need all the different signals to be able to sort of correlate against each other to be able to detect and hunt and address security problems. So all the different systems will feed in. What well, historically it uses and still does a log analytics workspace for the ingestion and storage. Well, that costs money. And so often what we have to do is potentially make some compromises on exactly what data I want to bring in as I balance, well, visibility and cost. And remember, if I start to compromise on those things, well, therefore I'm potentially compromising on my ability to detect threats. So what this new data lake capability does is it builds on the Azure data lake capability to provide a much cheaper store so I can get all of my security signals brought in. And then it uses the same scheme as you use today in your log analytics workspaces. So it's going to work with your existing connectors. And now I choose, hey, for this, where do I want to send the data? Do I want to put this into my traditional analytics tier or 
hey, I'll put it in the data lake tier. And I think I read that all of the analytics data will go to the data lake tier as well. Now, for the data that I choose to just put in the data lake tier, I can still run KQL, I can still run Python based analytics, but obviously it's not gonna be as performant as the data stored in the analytics tier. So I would think about, hey, for my more verbose logs that I may need if I need to go and do that hunting, well then, hey, I can send that to the data lake tier. I could run some scheduled job over that data and have the results sent to the analytics tier if I need to do more interactive hunting and investigations, but it's there. I could also use the data lake for a longer term retention. I can have it up to 12 years in there. But then I'm still gonna use that analytics tier for querying, for visualization, for alerting, for better proactive issue identification and resolution. But it's finally giving me the ability that, hey, I don't have to compromise on what I store. I can, I can go and pick where it makes the most sense. And that was it. I told you it was pretty quick this week. Uh, hopefully we're all gonna go and see Fantastic Four uh, this weekend, but until next video, uh, it's clobbering time.